for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center with Larry Walker on the cusp of Cooperstown. We're asking who's the greatest Canadian major leaguer of all time. And Rems was part of this discussion in our pregame meeting. Coming up with these names. There's not a lot of names, I'm afraid to say. But on Facebook, 85% are saying Larry Walker. 9% saying Ferguson Jenkins, who's already in the hall. 4% Justin Morneau and 2% for other. And I don't know who the other would be. So I guess, Kel, we've nailed the top three. If only 2% could say other. Now, Terry Poole, Melville product, longtime Houston Astro. I think he still holds a record for longest errorless innings by an outfielder. So that's nothing to sneeze at. No. God, no. Ross Mahoney and him used to play together. Our friend Ross. Haas. He'll be down at the showcase today. Um, so with Killer Kaminsky in studio, the head coach and GM of the LaRange Ice Wolves, we'll take your requests. And Bill in a Cinnaboya writes and he says, get him to tell the Ty Domi story from the Memorial Cup. We were just talking about in that. In Saskatoon. Killer, you can't get out of here without telling that story. You probably get asked it all the time. I do. I do. Was, you know, like I said, I haven't come back to Saskatoon for quite some time, um, just being in the States and that. And then, uh, but whenever I did come back to Saskatoon and you're out with your buddies, whatever, and someone would always bring that up, like that was the best fight, you know, in the Memorial Cup. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was pretty cool. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'm going to elaborate on that with the other Memorial Cup that Saskatoon hosted. So yeah, so that year, I mean, obviously you heard Ty Domi coming in and uh, the toughest in the OHL. And what was it, Peterborough? Peterborough Pete. yeah. Peter yep. Pete's. Yep, so he he was getting a rim around in the far corner there, and I anticipated that, so I went in for the big hit, and stocky guy kind of bounced off him, and we looked at each other, and, uh, and away we went. And uh, obviously it was a pretty good fight. And uh, so, I, I mean, that, that, that was it. I mean, it was just, uh, uh, you know, again, today, it's uh, whenever I come back, uh, people still talk about that fight. Now, with... The other Memorial Cup, and uh, his boy Max played in uh, London. London. So we were, after one of the games, we were all out. Because actually, they brought in Sask the Blaze brought in all of the '89 team that was on there back to that Memorial Cup. So, and I was scouting anyway for my team in Louisiana. And um, but anyway, we're at um, Hudson's, and my old roommate uh, Dean Holine, um, oh, who's uh, Obviously, a hell of an athlete himself with fastball and all that. But he, he, I'm, I'm talking with my uh, cousin Lee and his girlfriend, and uh, he c comes walking over and he goes, "Hey, killer! Look who I found!" And he was in the bar in, in Ty Domi, right? So yeah. me and Ty, we hit it off. We started talking. We hung out at the games, watched his boy play, and uh, now, you know, again, the s small hockey world to this day, we still call each other once in a while and check up on each other and say whatever. Had you not seen each other since 89? Well, we had fought a few times in the NHL. So that that was it. If that counts. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hated him anyway, right? Yeah, Back no then. kidding. <laughs> you know, and, and by the way, when I wrote Killer and he was in Fresno and I said, so why are you coming to LaRange again? And he said, I've been gone for 30 years. I want to come home. So has it been... Obviously, they named a rink after you in Churchbridge, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, Darren yeah. Dreger was on here last week talking about that and how proud he is of you and the town for doing that. But so coming home, how's that been? I think it's been it's been awesome. Um, you know the the weather's a little chillier, right, in Ooh, Fresno. That but, was my point. <laughs> yeah, I should be doing it the other way. I should have started in the SJ and then and going to end it up in right? Fresno, right? Yeah. Get, getting old, you know. <laughs> Um, Anyways, yes. Yeah, but it was just, uh, no, it was, you know what? Um, so I went through a little rough time uh, in the States there, but all my girls uh, are doing good. My oldest is in Chicago. It's her third year teaching. Uh, my other, and my two oldest graduated from St. Norbert in uh, Green Bay, and they were cheerleaders for the Packers. And my middle one just graduated. Really? My middle one just graduated from uh, St. Norbert, and she, it's her first year teaching this year. And then my other one uh, finished uh, high school, and she's in Belmont uh, University in Nashville. So and it was just like, because actually I turned Melville down, I think three or four years ago, just because of all the bills that uh, with, comes with the divorce and all that. And then 
also the exchange rate didn't help out. Oh. So once this was done, I mean, you know, dad's getting older. Uh, I got the girlfriend uh, land in Saskatoon, and uh, it was just like a full circle. It was just time to come home. Well, you see Killer's photos with all these beautiful blondes. Turns out there is kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Wow, Bay Killer. Packer, two of them. Great genes. Nice. Green Bay Packer cheerleaders. Wow. Well, they That's so, so the St. Norbert cheer team, right? They've been in cheer since they sure. were this little. Yeah, my this. daughter's in cheer. Yeah, it's crazy. But the St. Norbert cheer team cheers for the Green Bay Packers at all the home games because they don't have a cheer squad there like all like the Cowboy, Dallas yeah. Cowboys and all that stuff. So I do have, well, one last thing on you coming home. Seeing you fishing and pulling in these huge fish in the summer also tells me how much you're enjoying being up there. But let me ask you this. Today's player, today's game. I don't know why anybody would want to coach in it, but the coaches love it, and you're one of them. What's it like coaching these kids and from your days in junior? It's not even recognizable. Yeah, it's like you got to put on uh, 20 different hats for 20 different kids, right? But uh, you gonna got to see how you got to coach each one of them. Um, you know, and it's, you know, you, you've kind of, you got to give them a little bit more love than the, you know, I uh, said I'll, I'll pat them on the back when they need it, but when they do need a kick in the pants, I'll give them a kick in the pants as well. So, you know, not literally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah. can't do that. <laughs> we know what you mean. Not anymore. Not, uh, yeah. what's his name from Colorado there? Uh, the Mark coach. Crawford. Mark Crawford, yeah. And I like Mark. Mark, I love Mark's a great coach and all that stuff. So, coach to. Uh, That's all changed. Yeah. Yes. You know, just, yeah, it's just a different way, different way uh, of life today. And, but, uh, but again, it's, um, like I said, it, it's about adapting as a coach, you know, and uh, and as a player. Like, you know, we have a one really tough guy that loves to fight, but no one wants to fight him. And I keep telling him, look, look, no one's gonna fight you. You gotta change your game a little bit here too. You got good skill, you got a good shot. Let's score. Beat him up on the scoreboard, then the other stuff, you know, and get that last little thing in and get out. You know, let them come after you. So. That's that's kind of. Well, that was the odd thing because in the SJ back in the day, you couldn't fight in it. Twenty five years ago, you fought and you were gone, but guys still fought. Now that's pretty rare, isn't it? At all levels. Yes, yeah. but in the in major junior, you can still fight three times. Guys just don't do, do it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but the point is, in the SJ, you could never fight, and there was still twenty on twenty brawls. So it's any, just the way the players change. Is there any hitting in the dub? Anymore? No, nothing. No. Yeah, you know. I, I, and I, I, th I think that's, I get that a lot from our team is that no one wants to play us because we play that gritty style that we're going to crash. You could bang. drop the gloves. That's the you, thing. You know, the intimidation that, side yes. of it. Do you, do you re re kind of remember, I mean, it's not something you're going to be able to put your finger on and say, yeah, it was, it was November of 2001. So I'm not asking you to get real specific, but... Somewhere along the way in the early 2000s, the game changed where now if you throw a, a perfectly clean legal check, now everybody comes racing in like it's the worst thing that ever happened and the guy has to defend himself and drop his gloves for absolutely nothing. I just think it's, I'm kind of with Brian Burke on this one. It's just, it's silly that we, we now have a game where even at the highest level in the NHL, Hard hits are now a thing of almost the past. Whereas now the guy's got to defend himself and fight after a perfectly legal hit. It doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make any sense to you? No, it doesn't. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, I think the part, you know, of, you know, I, I understand. That. Well, and then again, if someone two hands you hard or whatever, you That's know, a dirty hit, though. And, a, but but then the, the guy just turns and doesn't do yeah, anything, right? Doesn't so, defend him, yeah. So, but when there is a clean hit, and, and like I said, today, like I, some of these hits they're calling penalties on, it's just like the guy, he's smaller and he's going down. Well, he still hits him with his shoulder, but yeah. he's still getting yeah. two-game suspension or whatever. And, uh, you know, the game is so fast and, and it's it's a reactive game that it's hard to control your body when he's trying to get yeah. out of the way too. in a split fraction of a second yeah. it looks a bit worse than what it is right so yeah. but yeah I, I totally agree i mean it's uh you know what let's let's take let's get rid of all that other nonsense keep the good hard clean hits in there and i understand some of the you know the hits from behind or yeah. or whatever totally are, different are, are bad you know so I, I mean here's another thing like 
if you can't hit with your shoulder anymore, now let's get to the back to the hip check. Now yeah, we see that either. start start taking knees out, right? And then everyone's going to bitch about that. Well, a lot of this could be saved if they put the red line back in. Guys aren't going 100 miles an hour. And I don't know if they'll ever do that or not because they wanted to speed up the game. Right. Now look what we have. Yeah, but with that it comes the other uglier side. Right. right. But they don't want that either. So I don't know what the answer is. Our producer, Clark, has brought up a really good point. Uh, Clark's a hockey guy. He's worked in the SJs. His friends... I'm going to read exactly what Clark's put up here. There's sometimes a hesitation for players to go to LaRange to play. However, everyone I've ever known who has played there loved it. Can you talk about the culture around the Ice Wolves there? And I I know exactly what Clark's saying. Any guys that we know that played for LaRange, and they've been there 25 years-ish, they loved it. Why is that? Well, first of all, I think it's it's an awesome community. And I think the boys have done a great job of getting it. Like, they've done every possible promo that they've asked and and plus you know the guys are building with the kids that are playing in minor sports so they go out and help out with practices and everything the the boys have done a great job um the board has been awesome to work with um you know in that manner um you know and i just think we're uh we're gelling really well like both you know both on ice but off ice um and and you know what i mean I, i heard the biggest thing is that no one wants to come to La Ronge, you know, because it's out there and whatever. But these guys are having fun, man. They're snowmobiling, and I know we're setting up a thing for some ice fishing. We were supposed to do it this week, but it was too cold to get it all squared away. But, you know, like again, we're trying to do that fun stuff to, you know, bring that culture back and, and, and you know, and have those winning ways because they did win back-to-back championships, uh, you know, a few years ago. Uh, 10 or I can't remember. It's been a while. Been a while. Longer than they'd like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I I really think it's it's an awesome spot to be. I mean, yeah, you, you might have to, you know, bear the cold, but you got to bear the cold. Anywhere. Yeah. At least yeah. you got trees to have shelter, right, up there? Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> this summer I went up to visit some hockey guys in August. It was my first summer off in 20 years. So you know the feeling. And I'm, I am take that turn off at Emma Lake, and it said – Waska Sioux went another 237K. I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm turning off here because that is a long ways up there. You must, do you like riding the bus? I talk like I did it forever. You've done it for far longer, for way more miles. How do you feel about it? Because I don't think I could do it anymore. I love it. You do? I love it. I mean, I like to get on and, you know, getting older now so you can do a little work and take a nap and. Nobody can get at you. That was always the good part for me. But. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I enjoyed it. You know, you hear the boys talking back there. You just sit there in your seat and laugh what they're talking about. I mean, and it's just the camaraderie <laughs> that, uh, that, that, that are on the bus. You know, I know in the old days, we used to play cards and that, right? Now everyone's got their, got the phones, phones right? Yeah. So play I guess the only game. time they're not on the phones is on the way to Flin Flon. There's no cell service for about three hours, so. How do they survive? I, I, I don't know. They're, <laughs> they're withdrawal. They're all sweating. and Team bonding. You actually yeah. have to talk to yeah, one another. exactly. Well, I, one of, um, we could sit and tell bus stories a lot. I'm sure you got a million. But I remember when I was with the Prince Albert Raiders, we bused from Spokane to Red Deer. And I, it was a long ways by our standards. I think it was 10 to 13 hours. We played crib the whole way. And for a dime a point. And it ended up being a lot of money. We're playing for a long time, right? So Donnie Clark is like giving us hell for the amount of money that's being exchanged. Because he didn't like guys in the back gambling for yeah. big money because the players like to do it. And uh, anyways, Dalman owed me, okay, it was 1993. $40 was big money back then. <laughs> I said, what size are your shoes? He said, 12. I said, I'll take both your pairs of shoes. So I did. And when we went to bed that night, I could see diamonds and clubs and hearts in my... You know what I mean? When I close my eyes, because I've been looking for 13 straight hours of cards, I'm kind of glad they're not doing it anymore. What was your big game? Kaiser? Kaiser was a big game, yeah. 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 And Crib. We played, you know, Crib. Crib's a great game. Yeah. But you get to know somebody when you're playing cards with them for 13 straight hours. That's what I liked about it, too, but they don't do that anymore. But that's part of the whole camaraderie, and I'd, I'd rather, I mean, if I was a coach... Correct me if I'm wrong. I would rather have a bunch of guys on, uh, playing fun games of crib for a nickel, a hole, or whatever that we want to do, um, as long as it doesn't, you know, kind of get like so the money's high enough. That you, people's feelings start getting kind of 
I would rather that than guys sitting all sitting on their phones watching YouTube videos and you know that you don't really get to know your teammates. Doing well, that, that was the thing with Donnie, Cards but he was like, way. "How can I tell the guys in the back of the bus not to play for big money if you guys are up here playing for me?" You know how that would drive right. him yeah. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of all people. By the way... For big money, 10 cents a hole. Well, it turned out to be big money. By the way, uh, the documentary this summer on you guys, what was it, the toughest toughest team ever? Yes. What did you think about that and the way it came out? TSN documentary. Were you happy with it? Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, for like I said, for me, I mean, I, I didn't play there all the time, you know, just on whenever I could get away for weekends, whatever. But, I, I mean, to me... To play with those guys and to know those guys, like, like, I'm not I'm not a much of a talker, but to sit, you know, Barry Melrose there, and you got Chaser, who those guys can talk, and then you got Wendell and Donnie, and uh, the list goes on and on. You and didn't need to talk. Yeah, I mean, especially <laughs> with with uh, Chaser and uh, and Barry. You know, um, man, he, the stories these guys would tell, you just sit there and be hard all to get night a word laugh. in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, like I said, it would, it, you didn't have to worry about, God, I was probably the 12th in line to, if there did something ever happen on the field, you know, fight wise, I mean, I, I didn't have to do anything, you know? So <laughs> that's why they call Joey it the Kosher toughest team. Yeah, and, yeah, the Coasters and Corey, right? Yeah, yeah. Corey, yeah. yeah. So. so that was the documentary on a. Slow pitch team. Oh, fastball. Fastball team. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you're really whipping it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, w before we let Killer go, a word from the SJHL. People like Kevin and LaRange Ice Wolves Hockey Club are a great part of the hockey culture in this province and this country. We were so proud to have them as a part of our family. Well, when I left Sastel Center last spring and Lubia told me that I knew this was going to be great and it's been exceeded my expectations. So, Killer, continued success. And we'll see you down at the uh, Cooperators Arena. Thank you, Rod, for having me on. Appreciate it. You betcha. It. Kevin Keller Kaminsky, next hour from the SJHL President Bill Chow, from the MJ President Kim Davis, and some reps from Sastel. It's a Hockey Tuesday. You're watching the Rod Peterson Show on Facebook Live and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.